it's Hillary. I'm here in my studio in Los Angeles and it is Tuesday and it is time for teacher space and I'm really excited about today because um, we're hitting the electric chair or high back chair again. I hope I have a good angle for you guys. We shall see. I want to make sure you can see everything. So hi Tracy, hey Beth. So this is the, hello Jen, high back chair, electric chair, I absolutely love, adore, obsessed with. And I know a lot of times it's used because think about, you know, you've got the handles, you can hold on, but we're gonna do our going outside today. And what I love about using this for not only myself, but clients is a couple of things. One is it really gets that feeling of scissoring your legs and really kind of figuring that out, which really affects our whole pelvis and our hips and that keeping the alignment as best as we can because those that kind of know me and how I work, no one's perfect, right? Our hips are never gonna be like just this perfect little thing because we go through life and things happen. So with this, it really kind of forces this kind of scissoring effect because you're, you're kind of connected here, right? You've got this whole grid going here too. I don't know if you can see this, but you've got these lovely little frameworks for the feet here for you're going up and you're going upside, which we're going to do today. And I actually have pretty heavy weight. I have it at the two top because I really want to feel the push of the leg on the pedal, not just the one up here. So finding that position for someone is challenging. I don't know if you've had to deal with this, but you've got two kind of different things you can deal with when it comes to the hips here. One is a super bendy, flexible, hypermobile person that can just really go into this huge rotation. And then someone like me that's a little tight and we've got some things going on, maybe on both, maybe on one side. So we'll kind of take a look at that. So it's heavy here. So I want to make sure that they really push the pedal down. So I don't care how, we're gonna push that pedal down. And we're just gonna kind of find, so I'm starting with my tighter hip here. So as you see, when someone steps off, this might wanna happen. They kind of go funky here, they've got their hands here. And if my foot is flat on this pedal, and I'm gonna place my foot right against that frame, and then my knee is pretty much following my second toe and then my hand is here. Well, my whole body wants to do this. So there's another thing we're working on is that counter rotation. So you can bring your client over for this one for balance, for hip mobility or stability, for, you know, hip, you know, keeping that alignment as best as you can. Hip hiking, hip twisting, rotation, counter rotation. Oh my God, the list goes on. Hand is here. I like to have the hand behind the head, but if my foot is perfectly straight on this pedal, I'm going this way. I can actually feel myself here. So I'm gonna have to rotate this foot out. And again, there's no perfect position. You've just gotta find play with that client and see. What we don't want is this knee falling in or not able to stay where it is. So that will kind of guide you. It's just seeing where that is. So like everything in Pilates, everything's working, right? So it's not just this leg. This is working by pushing down into that pedal. I like the hand behind the head because it tends to keep people from kind of going forward. So that same neck pull, kind of hand behind your head, pushing into it, growing tall. And I've got my, as much of my foot on as I can, and you can readjust as you go up. So this is what people want to do. Lean into it and come over. I'm over exaggerating, right? We don't want that. We want them to scissor the legs and lengthen. This is stopping us from going in that direction. So our knee can't go off and over like it can elsewhere, right? It's stopped. So we've got to kind of scissor and bring everything up. So I'm going to readjust my foot because I already figured that out and I'm going to press into this. I'm going to scissor my leg but I'm still pushing. You want to keep pushing with that leg that's on your pedal. So it's not all over here. And this arm is really pushing down into the pedal. So as I go down, if I'm not thinking about length, you'll hear that bam. So we got a lot to think about. So we're going to lift, pushing into here. I'm still pushing 
this petal down and scissoring and growing tall. And as I come down, I want to think again, I'm still going this way as I'm going down and I'm still pushing into that petal. So this leg is actually on fire. It's dying. And then I'm going to go up. So what? I'll kind of go into some like bad things I want to do, right? So I'm tight here. I want to kind of do this instead of opening. So you can think about, think about cueing this, you know, can that shoulder go back more towards the back wall? Can this hip go more back towards that back wall? Or can this open up? You can kind of cue as you see and you go. But they're just trying to go up and then all the way down with control. Now, I hate to turn my back on you, but I just want you to see. So, different side, same setup, and I'm gonna place this here. So what's gonna happen is, and I'll kind of show, if this is here, I am so, because this is my tighter side through here. So I've gotta open up, so guess what? I'm opening up wider, and actually, I'll do this for you guys. Hold, please. Let's just make it where you can see it better. Let's see if that works for you. Okay. All right. So, yeah, that's better. Okay. This is tight. Everyone's going to have a tighter side. Clients have a tighter side. We all have a tighter side, just the way we are. So when my foot and my knee are perfectly aligned here where I want them, this foot is parallel and it is just, this is all I feel, it's so super tight. So I'm just gonna rotate out a bit, open it up, give some room. And as you can see, it's a little more challenging on this side to keep this where it is. It wants to fall forward, <laughs> there I go. So again, it's a different side. So that is fine. That's why we're working in Pilates, right? So we can create some symmetry for them, person, ourselves. So same thing, you're gonna press in. I'm really pushing now. This side, much more challenging. I'm wanting to collapse over here. So how would we cue that if they're collapsing over here? Here we go. We've got this, we've got this. We got to scissor those legs. So I'm really, really having to focus on keeping that length on that side as I go up, which all comes into our hip hikes, the way we kind of move in terms of one side to the other, and then down. And again, it's really just cueing that scissoring of the legs. And I like to teach this a lot here with our foot correctors, which are awesome, which we've used, I think, if not, DM me, we'll get to it. And then coming all the way down. So it's not so much, and it's the same with the one to chair if you think about it. It's not really about this leg. It's really about the action of this leg. So, and I don't know if we've done it, but the whole press down, which I'll get to if we haven't, but it's that same feeling of this is your floor. So you're, even though we're going away, we're pushing that floor away the whole time. So this leg is just really getting, and as this happens, we've gotta kind of figure things out, right? So as they start to move, that alignment's gonna change, things are gonna happen, and that's when you can kind of cue, oh, don't forget, you know, push into this handle. They've got this support of the chair and this feedback to go off of, which is amazing. And just because the weight's heavy, it doesn't make it easy because it's pushing them up because they're having to push down. So it's that opposition, right? It's giving you support. You're finding all these things happening and you can see and, and kind of when you do it for yourself, kind of talk to yourself. It's like, oh, what's happening here? What's happening here? What do I need to do to get length here? What do I need to do to kind of make sure this doesn't happen, which is why I love the head, because you can cue to press back into the head and grow taller and, and, and feel that. So there's so many little moments on here that you can just use all these different little key, little feedback points for them. And that's what we love about teaching, right, is there's all this stuff going on that we're having to 
C. And even those clients that want to rush through, and I had this conversation with a teacher the other day, a new teacher, um, who said, oh, I'm always looking for things that are wrong, and I, what, you know, sometimes I can't see it. And that's fine. I mean, maybe you look at what's going right. Maybe you look at what's, what's good in their movement and go with that and, and feed into that. And then it, it will always lead to something, like something, but there's always maybe, maybe they're not focused. Maybe they're out in the world somewhere and this is gonna bring them in, so the breath. I mean, there's so much just to kind of guide them and not get into this whole, don't do that, don't do this. But when you do see that, you've got this, you've got the foot. You've got, oh, can you bring that hip maybe a little more forward? And they're gonna try, and if they can, they will. And you just keep working with it. That's what's so amazing. So anyway, I love this chair. Um, and I love going outside. And I love it for all those reasons I said. It's that balance, it's hip mobility, hip stability, alignment, seeing that hip and leg differentiation happen for them keeping that posture as they move, keeping the length on both sides. There's so much that one exercise can go for so many different bodies and movement patterns. So anyway, I'm like on a tear this morning. Thank goodness if you're not my client today because I've been like, oh my God. Anyway, this is the electric chair. If you don't have one, feel free to come use this one. It's awesome. Hi, Gross. And it is a Gross lovely so anyway you have bye Jen I know Jen has one of these and I have a wonderful 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 week and I will see you don't forget I'm starting the challenge the Pilates challenge 2021 if you're not familiar with it here's the scoop every exercise we choose as a teacher we choose for a reason whether it's like we talked about all of this we choose an exercise for a reason so I started this last year because we were all shut down. Well, we were shut down here. And so basically you post a picture and let me know if you want to participate because each week we have a different issue or connection or thing we're working on. You post a picture of you or your client doing that exercise that you would choose for that issue. And then people have to guess what it is. What's awesome about this is the different options and the different exercises that teachers chose. So say it was this, you know, finding our thoracic mobility. I chose one thing and I had a teacher in Canada that chose it something. I was like, oh my God, that's a brilliant choice. I never would have thought of that. Or you see something and you're like, wow, but it connected for that person. So it just shows how as teachers, we see things, but we might take a different path for that client than the teacher next to us, which is brilliant because there's really no wrong unless you're gonna harm your client, which I know no one will do that. But it's Pilates Challenge 2021, it starts June 1st. Super excited, I already have some people wanting to participate. So if you do, let me know, DM, but enjoy your day. I'm gonna actually, I have a break, go take a walk and hike before I start back up again. Bye guys, have a wonderful week, bye.